All right, hold on. For what? You guys there? Yeah, how's it going? Good, man. I don't know what is happening. My wheel of death is happening right now on Zoom for whatever reason. Yeah, it's all good, man. Uh, take your time. We have to just leave on a hard stop at 3.30 here, Pacific. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, so, cool. Yeah, yeah just uh, let me know whenever you're ready. My vi- oh, hold on. Maybe that's why. Oh, my camera. Hold on. Which one are you? Then? Ah, there we go. Perfect. This is uh, video, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't see yours just okay. yet. Okay. Okay. Oh, there you are. Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> yo, yo. How are you guys? We're good. Yeah, we're How doing are good, you? man. Wonderful. Uh, sorry for all the mix-up. It was, uh, yeah, I don't know what, uh, what no happened. No worries. We, um, I totally, I put in my calendar for Wednesday for some reason. And then the email, like the confirmation came and I was like, oh sweet, it is today. And, but it was actually a 24 hour notice. So that's what happened. (laughs) Yeah, that's life. That's what happens. And then, um, I went, I went through my email. I was like, wait, Nick got on at five. I was like, shit, it's a (laughs) five 30. Did you get on before? Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. That was just uh, Test. I just went and clicked on the link, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot." And then I just went back and did uh, finish up something else. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah. All right, company is billion dollar body, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. All right. So this will be the the second uh, of my interesting interviews today. My first, I actually interviewed a rabbi. Of all things, it was like. That's wild. I was like, what the, how the fuck am I interviewing a rabbi today? Um, but this is the That's first time fun. we've had a, uh, a husband wife on here. What's the definition yeah. of a rabbi? Uh, well, the rabbis are the Jewish leaders, like oh, the okay. Jewish pastors. Yeah. It's like, like the, like a priest, but, um, there's certain ones that are, So like every congregation has a rabbi, but this particular rabbi, there are like, I don't want to call them ascended masters, but like there are people who are kind of like driving the perspective and like, like the most learned of them. And this is a guy that like goes all over the world and speaks. Um, And it was really odd because he was, he wrote a book about the joy of intimacy. And so he was talking to a rabbi about love and sex. Nice. Like imagine talking to your priest about love and sex, you know, you're like, uh, I don't know how he can talk about sex. He has never had it. So he, so rabbis fully have sex. Yeah, they, it's. Oh, oh they can. Priest, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, but a priest well, can. A priest can. A priest can. Yeah, that would be really odd. Yeah, priest can. Rabbis can. Yeah. You're like, okay. wait, why are well, you? I mean, talking- it wouldn't really be odd, but. <laughs> You're like, wait, I didn't mean with little boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just I would ask him. So, like, what about this whole Jesus guy, like? Where was the mix up there? And you're like, <laughs> it was really fascinating. Like he, um, the book is really interesting. Um, but the That's concept, cool. if you could like think of the concept is, um, this is going to sound really strange saying without context, but how love and sex is ruining relationships. Wow. Sweet. And not, and not in the way that you would think where it's like, don't have love or sex. It's just like, he he how like it got whatever it was really really interesting like super super interesting that's cool that is yeah. cool um all I right like so different here's what i'd love to do just to let you guys know um nick like i told you our audience is very very similar to your audience so it's uh the majority are entrepreneurs uh generally pretty successful already uh we do have a small group in there that i think are you know, wannabe entrepreneur type. So they're like on the sidelines necessarily probably in businesses that they don't really love or doing things that they don't really love and, and looking to kind of break into different areas. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll start, I'll have you guys just share your story and who you guys are up, you know, what you guys are up to. I love that you guys, uh, from what Nick told me, Amanda, you guys, it is Amanda, right? Yeah. 
Okay. And do you pronounce your na name Elon? Elon, like or Elon Musk. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We just, we just, you. we just, <laughs> she's always right, Nick. Remember that. That's very important. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'll have you guys share whatever, whatever you guys want about your story. And then we'll okay. dive in. This is like super, super flowy and conversational. So whatever comes out, um, you guys can show up however you want. You can curse, you can dance, you can do whatever the hell you want. Cool. Okay? Sounds good to me. Awesome. <laughs> cool. We like to have fun here. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Have It All podcast and uh, following up on another podcast where we had a first by interviewing a rabbi. I'm here with a couple. This is our first married couple ever to be on the podcast. I, this is my second podcast. So I, this is probably like three plus years and I've never had a married couple. So Nick and Amanda, is it ba barely, right? Yeah, barely. Like we barely got here on time. I barely made it on the show. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well, welcome to the yeah. show, guys. Yeah, and you're, you're meaning the first couple physically here, not the first married couple you've ever had on the show, right? Like True. both of them. I'd hope not the first married person, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be odd now that I come to think of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. The first married couple together on the show talking at the same time. So we're going to see how this goes. They're actually sharing, for those of you guys yeah. that can't see the video, they're sharing a microphone too. <laughs> so, we don't do this that often. We don't both get on the podcast at the same time. Um, usually I'd let Nicholas go on because it's, it's sometimes hard for us both to talk. It's a long interview, usually. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting. And the reason I'd love for you guys just to share a little bit of your story, but I was speaking to Nick uh, before I, I spoke to Amanda and you were sharing all this amazing stuff that you guys are doing in the world. And he's like, yeah, and I got married really young and my wife's actually my partner, not in life and also in business. And I'm like, wow, that is A, incredibly unusual and B, um, I know that I work with my brother really closely and I know people are always like, how the hell do you work with your brother? And I know that having an intimate partner in, in a business is, is even a whole other level. Um, so yeah, I'm really I would curious. say it's easier, man. I'd rather have an intimate partner than a brother. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell, why don't you guys start by telling them what you do? They run an amazing company, a uh, billion dollar body and working with some amazing people. But why don't you guys, Start by telling me a little bit about what lights you up and what you're passionate about. Cool. Yeah, we're on a mission right now to redefine what it means to be a businessman. This is something that fires me up. Right now, the community is tackling a problem together of actually creating a billion-dollar net worth in the actual community of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood. So that's something we're all doing right now. But the long-term vision is that in the future, maybe the people that are on this show or listening right now, your kids, I would say, would be the people that when they think of businessman, it's going to be defined by my community, meaning that it's not going to be someone who does business and that's what they do. But it's a man that actually prospers in health business relationships, it's an actual lifestyle that they live. Similar to what you were talking about, rabbi doesn't just mean one thing. You were talking about some other guy you had on the show. It thing. And same thing with it is their destiny to be in business. That's the type of people we have that if you're not growing in gross revenue net and profit, then you're failing your destiny. And we help men make sure that they're not doing that without sacrificing their personal life. We do that obviously through tons of different ways, but that's the gist of it. Amazing. That should get you fired up. Amanda, Lon, anything you else you are want to say? frozen right now. You, you guys froze there for a second, but I think you're back now. Yeah. I had, did my audio now. come through though? The, the audio came through. It just, your, your voice didn't move, which makes it seem really odd. I was like, he's ventriloquist right now. Yeah. Oh, he's really okay. good. I'm just like, <laughs> all the words are coming out. Beyond that, he can do this too. <laughs> uh, cool. Amanda, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Um, just that what we're doing is, has been a long term in the making, you know, a billion dollar body started out as um, a health coaching and you know program for businessmen and it's just evolved into this incredible community of men that are becoming best friends like lifelong like business partners and, and friends that uh, were in each other's weddings like it's wow. just been incredible to see um, 
the guys connect um, from our live events to our masterminds, and then also seeing the women benefit from it as well, which is really great. There's a couple of people getting married in the community, um, a couple of people that are you know in new relationships. So it's just really exciting to see the ripple effect of what happens when men get in community. Yeah, so, so true. Um, and you guys specifically work in your groups just with men, right? Yeah, there is not one woman and there's not one person that does not own a business. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. So, and then the women um, that are connected, I have like a Facebook group where we like do calls and stuff where we can all connect. Uh, so we're all friends. Ha, that's so cute. The husbands are like, yeah, that's amazing. Um, so here's, here's a question. When you started, and Nick, you had like a really cool story because you guys are both really, really young. Um, and talk about a little bit your journey to getting to this place of, hey, you know what? This is really what matters to me. And, and this is the, the core mission that I want to uh, achieve in life. Yeah, a lot of it was after getting married, really. Um, my wife really pushed me to uncover things about me. We always talk about, you know, diamonds, yeah, they're created under pressure, sure. But I like gold even more because gold unrefined is not really valuable, though the same amount of gold is in there. You just have to refine it through refining fire in the process. So that's what I went through. I was failing in every area that we now help our men prosper in. I've noticed that that's pretty much the best mentor to look for. Not saying me in particular, though I think I'm pretty good at what I do. But Tucker Max said that like, if you meet someone who's failed their entire life and haven't had success, don't listen to them. You don't listen to the person that's been divorced 15 times about marriage advice. Though they have good things to say, they still haven't made it through the other side. And also, you don't want to just listen to someone who just had it happen easy, where it was just instantaneous for them. There's no struggles, because that won't relate to you if you're having a problem with it. But you generally want to listen to people that had a big struggle, fought through it, maybe even a harder struggle than you, and then had success on the other side. So I'm really grateful for what I've been through with the fact that I was 60 pounds heavier. My parents split up when I was four, wrote my first suicide letter when I was seven, used wow. to scratch the back of my throat and try to throw up blood before I'd go race motocross. I had graduated the 1.8 GPA and had summer school every year and didn't have a girlfriend for seven years. So health, business, relationships, network. I hated meeting new people. I would get anxiety. I used to get... Uh, tracked down by my teacher in third grade because I'd shit myself every single day in school because I was so nervous. Uh, I couldn't even go anywhere without, we were just talking about this because uh, there's, we were talking to a therapist lady and it's so funny, the things that I've gone through, I'm so grateful for them because it helps me relate and shows the story of overcoming. And that's what really made me feel that I have a mission and a vision now to be able to go help these people. The only thing that was holding me myself back was myself. Mm. I was too scared to even share my before and after picture even in my health for over a year. I mean, in the business, we're not talking about for like the four years that I never shared it with anyone because I hated that side of myself. I thought it was not beneficial at all. I just wanted people to like who I was, not look at who I used to be, who wasn't even me in the first place. So I hated that old self so much that I wanted to cover it up. And obviously now I'm on the other side of like sharing that story is what helps people connect with you. That's obviously why you have a show like you're doing in a community as well. So I'm really curious about this weight thing. So, so like, take me to the other side of this. What, what shifted? Because aside from business people, you know, like body and stuff like that is such a huge issue uh, all around the world, specifically in this country. Like what had you come out and be okay with sharing that? Uh Man, it's a tough process. Like it really just was that whole thing of it being a process, seeing other people lead by example. That's why for in our community, I don't just necessarily want to reach everyone. I want to have people live a life that's worth modeling because it's not necessarily, you don't learn just from reading and doing all these things. You learn from watching and picking up things as a kid and you learn from your environment. And so when people have Set, have good models, then you can follow that. So I think a lot of it was seeing other people sharing their story was a huge deal. And then more and more of just getting that encouragement, that this was okay. But even when a man and I started dating, I had pictures of myself when I was fat, literally fat. I can say that because I was fat. And I ripped them all up and threw them away. I was so nervous she was going to find something about me. I didn't show her my license of wow. me being overweight until we were like engaged. It was super weird. Well, actually, I, I'm a snoop and I stole his wallet and looked at his driver's license. Wow. <laughs> so what was that yeah, like? That's what I found out. What was that like for you, Amanda, when, when, as you know, like in a relationship, right? So a man 
has in essence been hiding and I'm sure you, you can understand why, but like, he's obviously hiding something from you. Like what was that conversation? Like, how did you guys get through that? Well, I knew, I knew he was overweight. Um, I just, he just didn't want to show me any pictures. Um, because he was embarrassed by it. Um, I don't really know what the conversation was. I was just like, how come you didn't show me this? Mm -hmm. And then, because in reality, like it didn't, it didn't affect me at all. It didn't affect him. It was just like, wow, that's how you used to be due to all these other, um, you know, these circumstances, which, um, for me, like, and I didn't really care because I actually was overweight when I met Nicholas. Um, <laughs> I was about 20 pounds heavier. And so he actually helped, like, he helped me live a healthier lifestyle. Wow. Um, I grew up in Ohio. So I would, like, eat chips and fast food and Taco Bell and Wendy's every day. Like, and that now was you're normal. drinking kombucha. Yes. Actually, this even was hard to adopt um, because... I had never eaten anything fermented my whole life. And Nicholas would drink these when we first met. And I was like, ew, those are so gross. And now I'm obsessed with them. It's kind yeah. of bad. I was actually just <laughs> drinking mine like just an hour ago. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, so really, was I. They're really good. They're really good. Yeah. Um, all right, back, back to your business because I'm really curious. So you have this mission and now you're like, okay, these are the people I want to help. I want to redefine man. I wanted to redefine businessman in the world, which is a huge undertaking. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure on your way to designing this and what this looks like and the, the probably 20,000 iterations from where it was to what it is today. Um, what was that process like for you guys? Cause the whole time you were together doing this, right? Yeah. So we first got started out together right when we got married, we got into business doing a network marketing company and that was the health and is health and wellness. So we started, you know, pushing supplements on everyone and doing some plans. And then we realized, um, well, that didn't really work out too well. It kind of failed. And so then we resorted to like, let's just help people without having to push all these supplements and make a higher profit. So then that resulted into just working with all, um, all people and we're like, okay, that can't happen. Um, then we resulted into working with just entrepreneurs. So we did that for like a year really well. And then it transitioned into there's, it's so like, that's the biggest thing that people need to take away is that you can target, you need to target a specific person. Like, you know how they always talk about the avatar, yeah. but like, Gender really is powerful because how you talk to a man, well, how he wants to be talked to is very different than how a woman wants to be talked to. So you have to figure out who you're targeting. And our marketing was very neutral. So we weren't really like hitting men or women. It was just kind of like, yeah, like we work as entrepreneurs. But then when we got super focused on just working with businessmen. That's when like everything took off for us. Mm, brilliant. What do you think you was other than that, which I liked, that's a really, really, really key point for anyone running any business. Um, what do you think was one of your biggest growth curves and learning curves uh, in, in launching this business? Nick was like, I got this. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a representation of it right there. Me taking 100% ownership of the growth of the company. Women love to feel safe. Men like to lead. And when I tuned 100% responsibility, went out there and grabbed this thing by the horns, that's when everything changed. It was the beginning point of change, but changed nonetheless. And that's really when things started changing. And that's why, exactly why we do what we do today with the businessmen that we work with. Mm -hmm. It's like taking 100% responsibility. Of course, we're both doing it. But now I'm taking all the burden, all the load. She has the same authority except for she has none of the repercussions. Of course, she puts pressure on herself and there's, there's things that happen if you do the wrong actions, but ultimately the success and failure of the company is now on me. And I think that was a huge part of it. On top of that, having, we call it the 3D business and the 3D business man. And everyone right now can actually add this to their business and literally make more money tomorrow just from speaking this message. It's A, the first thing is having a vision that's bigger than your product or service. 
So when you hear my vision, there's many people that are already listening that are like, okay, I'm going to go pay this guy. For what? You don't even know what I sell, bro. But for some reason, they, they see that this mission, they want to be a part of it. So that's the first thing is having a vision or mission that's bigger than the product or service. So people will pay you without even know, knowing what they're buying because they just want to be around. Very easy to hold retention when they're not buying just because of a certain perk of a product or service. And on top of that, you don't get lumped in with everyone else's cheapest guy wins. You get to pick the prices at that point, pick the investment. Price is never a word to be said. Investment always and you get to pick that because at that point, it's something that's completely different than anyone else. The second thing is having a product or service that solves a problem or a need. Yeah. See, there's McDonald's as Ronald McDonald. That's a great way to give back, yet they're probably causing the problem. So whatever you're trying to discover, the thing that you're trying to do to help the world, you want to solve that problem in some way through your product or service. The third thing is giving back, having a mission to give back to something. And if everyone has those three components, they have ultimate motivation for themselves. Two, it's not even about giving, even though it's going to help the world. It's more about yourself. More blessed is the hand that gives than the hand that receives. So if I give a billion dollars, I'm more blessed. In the world today, they'd be like, BS, I want the billion dollars. No, giving a billion dollars is actually going to help you more than it helps the world. You get more blessed. And then on top of that, having that vision, man, that's the big key. That's where everything shifted. I had a great product or service, but I got lumped in with everyone else. My dad and I, we once lost an entire contract of carpet cleaning with all the big banks in San Diego over one cent a square foot. Really? One cent. And they messed up everything. These banks had to rip out all their carpet, put in all hardwood floors and, and hard services, and pull everything in-house because of this one contract they switched on us because of one cent. Why? Because we were just like everyone else. And when we had, if we had a bigger vision, some other way for them to connect with us, it would have been completely different. So to not get lumped in, use the 3D businessman and 3D business model to be able to use those three things to not be 2D, to not be one dimensional, but to actually stand out. So brilliant. Great answer. Love it. Um, what do you think makes you guys stand out so much? Because like you said, I love what you said. You, there really are people, many people actually, who are like, hey, you know, I'm going to go after the man. Um, I don't want to mention any names, but like there's a lot of people in that space and you guys are clearly doing incredibly well and working with some incredible people. So what do you think is that differentiating factor for you guys? Ah, oh, goodness. Well, I know definitely results. Um, and I think just speaking the message of what's true to us, mm. other people have such a different idea of what a man should be. Um, some people which we found is like, be more feminine and tap into that. We don't preach that at all. We actually think that men need to be more masculine. And we actually, Nicholas was just interviewing a woman today who's a relationship expert uh, who like, works with billionaires. And she was saying how, what women want and what, you know, what they want in a man. And it's like too many times, and this is something that we work with, is the man having a vision and being a leader. Like that's why like all my friends, a lot of them are like, I can't find a guy like, and you, and Hollywood paints this picture of like these guys, um, being losers and idiots. And these are what, this is the role model. Like these men are like looking at them in Hollywood and it's totally messed up. So what differentiates us is results and speaking what's true to us. A lot of, uh, people out there, a lot of the guys aren't married, so they can't give relationship advice. Um, some, you know, I would say that's probably the biggest thing that resonates with like what differentiates us is we paint the vision and the dream. And if you want to sell anyone anything, you have to, you can't just sell them the product or the service. You have to sell them the dream and the vision. Yeah. And that's what we do really well because we attract the guys that want to have a great relationship. They don't want to just go and bang, you know, chicks every single night. That's not what they want. Yeah, I would say the last thing just to add on to it is, is very much so having a curated environment. As you asked at the beginning, it's like you had to ask because no one else is really doing it to a high level of, hey, you guys only have men, right? I know it's meant like it's for businessmen, but you probably have some women you allow to come in because you make money off of it. And I could easily, like, believe me, they bang on our door to be able to come into the community. They want to pay for our live events. They want all of it. Absolutely not. We, well, you have to have someone that's not a business person, right? And it's like, no. You, you discount things, right? No. I don't care if you're quad amputee, freaking purple heart winner, you don't get a freaking discount. It doesn't happen here. 
And so just that's just the way we do things. And I think because of that, we've earned respect. And so trust and respect is something that we definitely have. I even had a client once uh, to show my, my trust and respect that they could have. They were like, listen, I don't like being pushed this much. I'm not going to be able to go forward with this program. It was a $10,000 investment. He had paid uh, $2,500 of it. And I said, great. Just so that you know that you can always trust me forever, uh, I'll take that last $7,500 and you do whatever you want with the rest of the program, but I'm going to show up for you. If you don't want to show up, that's up to you. Um, but I'll take that $7,500 now. And it's like, what? Normal people would be like, what? Like, you shouldn't do that. Like, what the heck? No, there was a refund policy. The refund policy was three days. You made the decision. By me doing this to you, you're going to learn a lot more than if I give you your money back to not solve the problem that you obviously have, which is making commitments that you can't follow through on. So I would say that the fact that we follow through on our commitments, that we show up for the person every single time based on what we say, not based on what they say, and that they can trust us forever. That guy texts me during Thanksgiving and said, happy Thanksgiving, man. Thank you so much. Could you imagine that ever happening? Our two people that we've really ever had to refund ever in the history of our company have come up with us within a calendar year saying, thank you so much. You transformed my whole life. Why? Because they could trust us because we were consistent because we didn't go back on our word. I literally said I had to raise the prices for a ticket just yesterday. And there was tons of people that were begging for something. What did I do? I raised it and I made them put, pay full price. Why? Because I said I would. And they can trust that. And I think that's a big differentiating differentiating factors that it's so not short term. Could I make more money trying to do this whole like weird, like non-trust thing? Absolutely. But who's everyone going to, who's everyone going to come up to when everything else doesn't work for them? The person they can trust and yeah. trust is built on following through over and over again. Trust is earned every day and it can be lost in a second. That's yeah. what's crazy. Yeah. There's, there's something so beautiful that you just highlighted right now. And, and I do think that this is where a lot of coaches go wrong, which is, they want to make the sale or they want to be liked or loved or accepted or blah, 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 blah. Right. And they'll wuss out and people hire you as a coach to be an unwavering stand for them to stand for their greatest self because guess what? Their greatest self doesn't show up all the time. The person that shows up is that little kid who's scared to death. And so many times that, that person, had that experience where they backed out of a commitment or squelch or did something because they got scared and that little boy got triggered and they were running the other way. And the fact that you were like, no, I'm just going to stand here. You made this commitment, you get in there. And I think that's so huge and really, really few people are willing to do that because it is scary, right? Like as a coach, like, okay, well, if this happens, then this guy's going to go and talk about this and people get all this stuff in their head. And it's like, dude, man up. Like, this is how you got to be. Otherwise, like you said, they they don't get their life and you failed, not they failed. And I, I love that, man. I think that's really brilliant. Yeah. If you do any of that stuff, bro, you, the, you already failed. Like yeah. you're, you failed yourself. Cool. People like you, but you failed. Yeah. At this point, I didn't fail. People can go and say whatever they want, but I didn't fail me. And so, so many people, let's just talk about this for a second. Why did we show up on this interview? Most people would. Why? Because they made a commitment to someone else. Yet when they make a commitment to themselves every single day, they don't follow through. Luckily, people that listen to shows like this, they're typically the people that follow through for themselves, for other people. But most people that don't get on shows like this, they end up not following through for themselves. Usually they'll show up for other people, maybe a little bit late, but they say, I'm going to go to the gym today. I'm going to start that business today. I'm going to get my to-do list done today. And what does this do? It means that they they've have a lack of trust even in themselves. They can't even trust themselves. They lie to themselves every single day. And so distrust with yourself is one of the scariest things that I've ever seen. And it's like, that's the one person you definitely want to have trust with is yourself. And if you can't trust yourself, then why should you ever expect anyone else to trust you? Yeah. Amanda, did you want to add anything Bro. to that? <laughs> Man, it's just a big like, like, okay, for one, if you're on this podcast right now and maybe you have a fear of like what people think about you, maybe you're like, dude, I could never yeah. tell people like, no, I'm not refunding you or no, you still have to pay the full amount. I would definitely say to get some like, talk with a therapist because I just, I just get started working tell, with a tell therapist. Tell how you feel when I, when I'm talking to people and you hear me. It's the most uncomfortable thing ever. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm just over here like at my desk, like 
either this person's going to buy or they're like going to commit suicide. This is so intense. And luckily they end up buying <laughs> and nothing bad has ever happened. Um, but from that act, their whole life is transformed. It's the most uncomfortable situations that get people to finally take an action on something. Um, too many times I've, we, we let people, we buy into their excuse. I personally do it. I'll buy into their excuse of being like, no, you're not doing that. I see your potential and I'm not letting you get away with that. And that's what they need. They need that. We all need that. But sometimes it, it takes that strong, I don't give a shit about what you think about me. I know what's best for you and what I'm supposed to do as your coach or whatever your position is. Yeah. There's a, I learned this a long, long time ago. There was a woman, she was in front of a room, probably like about 120 people. <clears throat> and she, she created like this distinction for the, for the entire weekend. And she said, look, I'm going to take you through a process. And during this process, your little self is going to come out many, 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 many times. I want you to know that no matter what happens, I will always speak to the giant that is inside of you. And even if that scares you or pisses you off, I will only be speaking to that, to that part of you. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I was like, you know, at first I heard it. I was like, that sounds like gimmicky and bullshit. But then you see a human being being an absolute unwavering stand for people's greatness. And you just see greatness being pulled out of them. You're like, whoa, that's some next level. And uh, yeah, I love that you mentioned that child that. brain thing. So real though, man, it can come out sometimes. And I'm like, what is this? It's that like super fight or flight, super triggered, uh, can't control yourself, no self control. Those are all things to look for if you're doing that ever to yourself. And there's even to the point, man, where in relationships, it happens where people actually know it. And they'll start telling their spouse like, hey, by the way, like it's about to happen, go run away and like lock yourself into a yeah. room because I'm about to go like AWOL. And generally you can see when people do this through, since you're touching on it, when, when they typically will come and apologize afterwards, like they go off, they go crazy and then they come back and they're, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. And so typically I used to feel like so hurt by that because I didn't know exactly what was going on. If anyone ever did it, I grew up in a household similar to that. Mm. So when people did that to me, I was like, I feel like such a bad person. I didn't mean to hurt their feelings. Like what the heck happened? Not knowing that it was really all just some one thing triggering them. And then out of that, they're just talking out of a complete lens. Yeah. Nothing to do with the, anything that you're saying. You could never say anything right at that moment. You might as well just like walk away or just confront it where it's at. And I've done that before too. I'm like, no, yeah, that thing that you're doing right now. I'm like, hey, by the way, no children brain, like you freaking out, getting offended at this stuff. And then they're like, what do you mean? What, blah, blah, blah. They start going off and go, no, that, that right there. No, no, that, that thing that you're doing right now. Yeah, none of that. It's so yeah. funny. It is. I'll tell you, you guys don't have kids yet. Um, it's really fascinating when you like know all this human behavior stuff. And then you get to watch it in a little human who is developing. And you get to realize like all the stuff that you've probably been talking about, your therapist and all these patterns that you've uncovered and released in yourself. And, you know, even when you said like, I'm listening to him and I'm noticing how uncomfortable that makes me, he's not even talking to you at that moment. And you're like cringing, right? And you just notice. And then mm -hmm. when you watch these little beings grow up and you, well, two things that are amazing. One is you start to realize how young these patterns are mm -hmm. and like how quickly they embed in us as a human being. The other thing that kids are brilliant at is they are the best mirrors for you. So it's like, whatever your way is, they mimic. They don't do what you tell them. They mimic what they're seeing. And it's just this little mirror of you doing your inner child thing in person. And you're like, I'm not like, holy shit, I am like that. And it's just, it just like blows your mind. So cool. I'm kind of excited actually. Uh, it's it's going to be a very awesome. learning experience. Yeah. Just take ourselves I, uh, to a whole new level. I, I've, so you were talking about like coaches and therapists and, and all this stuff. So I had this, I, I, I'm out in this world where like a lot of woo woo shit finds me. And um, someone said this line to me today. I thought it was where really funny. Where do you live stuff. at? Say it again. Where do you live at? 
I'm in New York, but my brother's in San Diego. And I just think like energistically what's happened because things just flip, you know, California is like a lot more woo woo than oh, other yeah. places. And San Diego is like a hub of woo woo. Yeah. They their own, their, their own like distinction for woo woo. But anyway, this, this woman said to me, she goes, I'd rather be woo woo than boo hoo. I was like, oh, that's kind of clever. So this woman <laughs> reaches out to me out of nowhere and is like, I'm going to do this reading. Uh, she's like, no, no, no. We were like, she's like, I love what you're doing. I'd love to connect. So we connect for like 30 minutes. And then she tells me that what she does is she, she channel, this is going to sound really crazy, but she channels your children's soul. Like she can speak to your children's soul and have that soul communicate messages to you. Like as the parent, like, Hey, I want you to do this or Hey, I'm trying to help you with that or whatever. And I'm sitting there and my mind is just like, what the fuck am I experiencing? It was like two hours. She did this reading for me out of nowhere. Like it wasn't the intention. And I walk out and I have to tell you, like, there's a lot of shit that I have had to suspend my, my belief about because every time, and Nick, I think you and I spoke about this on the phone. Like every time we have a belief in reality, in circumstances, in ourselves about what we are and what we're capable of. I don't care how great that vision is. It's still a container. It's still some sort of box. And it takes people who can see bigger and see farther and have expanded and done all these things to have you see, even though they might be invisible walls, like it's still a wall. And every time I've given up this, like, this, this is the cap, you know, like, this is what's possible. And then someone comes in my life. I'm like, Where the fuck did that come from? Like, what? I've never even experienced anything like that. It's just so wild what's available out there. It's just brilliant. And I know, Nick, you were telling me, like, you got a chance to work with some billionaires and things like that. That reprograms what you believe is possible in life, right? Dude, all I have to do is spend time. Think about sports. I went to the North Shore of Hawaii and watch people surf like the best waves ever. And I didn't even go out. I went home to San Diego and I surfed better just from watching them. Like, it's so crazy. Even while I'm surfing, sometimes I'll be having kind of an off day and I'll see one really good guy and I'll watch him one wave. And I'll just, all of a sudden it'll click, click for me. Like now I'm on their like rhythm almost where like all of a sudden I'm picking up like exactly their same rhythm and I just kind of fall into their flow. It's very interesting. So when I'm around those types of people, just even if it's a moment, you may even see this when people go to live events. If you check it, because we say some things are better caught than taught, like you catch it in the atmosphere. Yeah. That's why you also want to be careful what atmosphere you're in as well, because you, you can catch negative things as well uh, if, you're not, like, if you're not aware of it. But you walk in and then turn around and walk out and you'll already be better. It's just that simple. Like it's that simple. Obviously, there's accountability. There's making sure that you walk things out afterwards. So many people get a breakthrough, and then they end up going right back to their old habits just through like putting themselves in a bad environment. So I believe that breakthrough happens in a second. Walking it out takes a lifetime. And that whole thing though that you just said, being around those people just for a split second, it's just like elevating. Like I remember the first time we were selling our services for almost nothing about five years ago, four years ago. And this guy came up to me and goes, oh yeah, some guy I know did that too. It was like $10,000 for like one day. He'd fly out there and then we'd give him some plans or whatever. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. So I just like doubled my prices uh, and took the same exact line that he told me, which was, hey, if all your dreams happen, if you just took this one pill, what would it be worth to you? I'm not saying that there is a pill, but what would be worth it? They say priceless. You say, well, you don't have priceless in your bank accounts. So like, what would you actually invest? Would you sell your car? Would you sell your house? How much money do you physically have? People will tell you how much money they have in their whole bank account. And they would drain the whole thing. You go, cool. Well, it's not going to be that. It's going to be this. Let's get started today. Oh, you just told me that it'd be worth like, and it just blew my mind. And I was like, yes, I get to have them tell me what it's worth to them before I ever go into it. So I already feel comfortable that the investment is less than that. And then on top of that, I've just gotten blown up by just one second of someone telling me that someone else was doing it at a bigger level. Yeah. There's just so much truth to that. I don't think, uh, not everything has to be slow, man. That's the thing. Everyone wants to transform slow. I'm trying to have massive transformations multiple times a day, every single day. Yeah. It takes something. It takes something to want that. That's a desire. You know, like some people will go through a process and transformation is not always pretty. Right. Sometimes it's like filled with pain and sniveling, crying and like all sorts of stuff. And for a lot of people, 
that is not what they desire. You know, they experience that. And even if they get to the other side of it, they're like a little hesitant to do that again. The next they time. still don't know what it's going to give them. I, I, that's like, the thing. What do you want? The pain of today or the pain of tomorrow? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The pain so of true. today or the pain of a lifetime, people. Let's go. Yeah. Amanda, you look like you were itching to say something. Hey. Um, <laughs> I think I was just, I was just going to say about what he said about doing transformation now rather than waiting because like, okay, if, if someone's younger and you see, and you have like a, a limiting belief, okay, and maybe you don't have kids yet that limiting belief is going to transfer into every area of your life. Absolutely. So you might as well just get rid of it now before it affects more people, affects more of your happiness of your life, affects maybe your future children because they'll carry that limiting belief because you have it. So it's just like, if you can deal with stuff as early as possible, that is definitely the best option. And that's why we talk so much about relationships with our guys because a lot of them aren't in a relationship yet. Um, I would say 30% are. So the other 70%, we teach so much to them about relationships because we don't want them to have to learn it, you know, three years down the road. Deal with it now. Deal with your crap now before you get into a relationship because you'll just carry all that baggage with you. Big time. Yeah, there's something really interesting. And, and I don't know if you guys are finding this in, with the people that you work with because you're specifically working with business men. Business men tend to be very like a type, very masculine, like go, 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 do, 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 do. And generally those people are fucking miserable at relationships because everything is so like, I'm going to earn my worth, my identity, everything is around my business and my money and all that stuff. And like in relationships it's just a completely, it, it just doesn't work. And then they end up sacrificing. And like, we kind of work with people who have, they're, they're in relationships generally shitty ones. Uh, because they've sacrificed everything to get to that monetary goal. And they like, I I say that for someone, when they check that last box, you know, like when you're 20 and you have this huge dream, like when I'm 40, I'm going to be this, this, and this. And then you work your ass off for 20 years. And some people get there faster, right? Like I tell people like that last checkbox for some, some people, if they haven't done it in balance, and this is what I love about what you guys do. It's like, It's not just about the money. It's so much more holistic than that because when they check that last box, thinking that that last box of I'm going to sell my business for whatever, $50 million is going to finally fill that void inside of me and have everybody love and accept me. And then they check it and they just feel empty. Yeah. There's this everything. There's this one guy that I actually, I follow right now on social media and I'm not going to say his name, but he sold a business for 50 million. And he's probably 31 um, and he's single and he's just like, I wish that I had a a wife because I want to have kids, Mm. but he can't like, I mean, I guess you could adopt him and be a single dad, but it's just like, he wants to have a family so bad and he doesn't, but he's got money. Yeah. So, but he can't have that aspect of his life yet. It's tough. Yeah. Nick, you want to add? I think community is such a big deal. I realized that. I'm okay with any motivation. If money's your motivator, we just have to figure out a way for ROI to be seen in a relationship in a positive way. Because everyone has different motivators. Some people are motivated by helping people. Some people are more motivated by leadership and power and things like that. And I don't necessarily think they're all bad because then just being someone that you're not, you're never going to be that good at it. Transforming who you are, I think is a big deal. Every single day getting better. But instead of thinking like cravings are bad, so try not to have cravings. you know, being selfish is bad. So try not to be selfish, be selfless. And it's always this like grind of trying to be someone that we're not all the time rather than being like, okay, how can I make sure that my selfish motivations are actually making a big impact? Mm -hmm. Like if I look at um, mother Teresa, I look at her and I'm like, she did exactly what she felt like she should do and what she loved to do. And it ended up making a big impact. Was she selfless or selfless? Selfish compared to everyone else because everyone else doesn't do that but selfish in her own right because she did exactly what she wanted to do and it made her feel good. End of story. Yeah. And so from there, I'm like cravings. Like Amanda's always craving kombucha and green juice now. Yeah, <laughs> craving was a bad thing. It was a bad thing, dude. Everyone's like, don't crave. Cravings are bad. I nope. used to crave um, fried chalupas with cream cheese or uh, chimichangas. And <laughs> yeah, so I, I look at that stuff and I'm like, how can you find... 
like a thing that shows you that relationship does that type of thing. And like some guy just messaged me the other day and he's like, oh my gosh, all my friends are getting married because I'm in a wedding this weekend. I'm in a wedding later this year, like actually in the like actual wedding yeah. party. And he was like, oh, everyone's getting married. I'm just over here building my business. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like actually if I didn't get married, I would have half the size, if not less size of the business that I have now. So you actually never know what you're missing out on. You could grind your whole life and be single. And yeah. that's cool. But like I am super results bottom line oriented, but I also see how my relationship, one, it's a higher priority, which is a practice. It's not just something you realize. It's like something that you put in your calendar. Show me your calendar. I'll show you your life. But in community, I'll tell you this. I got into a mastermind that was all about giving about three years ago. I invest in it every year. And even if you're selfish and you just want attention, babies cry for it, men die for it, you can give and get the attention in the mastermind. Like he gave the most amount of money. Oh my gosh, like good job. And he's like, oh, I'm a selfish bastard. Like, oh, the glory. What happened though? He gave and it changed the world. Because no matter what, if I'm looking at the world standards, intentions really just don't matter. If you live off 90 or live off 10% of your income, give away 90%, you make a million dollars a year, you give away 900,000. Someone else makes $10 million a year, lives off a... 89% of their income, they still gave more than you. Kudos for living off 10% of your income, but no one gives a crap. Kids that aren't eating don't give a crap. Who gave the most actually matters. And so when I look at that kind of stuff, I'm like, how can we make sure that these external motivators work? And then how can we immerse ourselves in an environment where our selfish ambitions really actually become beneficial to everyone else as we are learning and growing? And so I think that uh, when people are in gangs, they really are just trying to fit in in a culture and community. If you root them in another community that's about helping people, that's about giving back, setting the example and having someone else be the leader first to set that example, they're going to do it naturally out of their selfish ambitions as they start growing and moving and molding into their new person. So I really think that, man, if we can get people into an environment where some man out there that maybe the people that are listening right now are setting the example of leadership, it sets the tone for the culture and whatever the culture says is honored is what people will do. Compensation will always drive behavior. Compensation isn't always money. It can be validation. It can be worth. Like it can be someone giving them attention. That's their compensation. So however you give it is what they're going to do. That's why kids cry to get attention. Compensation, attention. When you give it to them, when they scream and yell. So just don't give it to them when they scream and yell. Yeah. Don't, don't count to three. Count to one. Count to three and you'll have to go to three every time. Why? Because you never have a repercussion until you get to three. Same thing will happen. I'm so excited to talk to you guys like 10 years from now. <laughs> it's going to be brilliant. You know why? Yeah. There's, there's a few things. One, I love when people are young and hungry and like are up to something. And I think the stigma about this, you know, millennial generation is that they're fucking entitled and, and lazy and blah, blah, blah. I actually, and maybe this is just my circles, I don't find that to be true um, at all. In fact, I think they're just, I think the generation, like our parents' generation and even our grandparents' generation just lived in a very, very, very different time. We are basically, if you think about it, like depending on how old parents are, but like people in their 40s, maybe 50s are the first generation ever to not live a life of absolute survival. Like up until that point, everything was just survive. It wasn't about thinking like you were talking about giving back and having intellectual conversations and tr transformation. Are you fucking transformation? Who had fucking time, <laughs> who has time for that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like who had time for that? Right. So like that generation was the first one who was like, okay, we don't need to survive anymore. Now this, like the 30 year olds or so this is the generation that's like you know what that whole corporate culture doesn't work for me like i want to create my own thing now this younger generation if you think about it whoever was like they're fucking lazy the best ideas that have been created in the last five to ten years have all come from them because they're wired differently like they're there's the ability to see past the veil that every generation before couldn't they're solving needs that for that generation was never even a problem like communication structures and and uh how we travel and how we connect to each other throughout the world like 
you know, to that older generation, it's like, oh, this is technology. But no, like this is building the life that we all get to live in. So, A, I just want to acknowledge you guys because I love, 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 love when people take a fucking chance and go pursue something that they love that's so much bigger than money. Like you said, the vision, right? And then the second thing is you guys are on a such fast ascended path uh, of transformation, both personally and in business. And I'm sure you guys will be amazing parents and all that stuff. And that's why I said, it's going to be so cool to talk to you guys like 10 years from now and just look back yeah. at these moments in the journey. Cause I could tell you like, for me, I hear certain things that you're saying. I was like, yeah, I used to think exactly like that. And there's certain things that like, just my view of like being a parent and be like, it just, it, it alters and changes so much. And I'm sure like if I asked you five years ago, your process, your, you know, your ideas about life, very different than it is today. Right? Yes. <laughs> it's so cool. Like I just, I'm very, very excited to see where this journey takes you guys. It's just awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're excited too. We'll we'll have to set up a date ten years from now to reconnect. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm sure I'm sure we'll be we'll be connected <laughs> throughout this yeah. time. Um, here's what I want to just ask you before we we wrap this up. Um, 2017, from what I've seen, for a lot of people, was like a super turbulent year. Uh, a lot of stuff came up, like a lot of big, just Shit. massive, massive transformations. Um, was there something like that you really took away from 2017, uh, into 2018 that you're like, wow, that was fucking huge. 2017 was definitely our best year. Um, so in terms of, in terms of like big things, I think just realizing what our mission is and what we're really, um, accepting what we want to do. You know, a lot of people, especially when you're young, they put, containers around you of what you can and can't do and even marketing people oh that marketing doesn't work you can't do that you can't have a lifestyle brand you can only stick with one niche it's like for us we when we expanded to focus on health wealth and relationships it changed everything for us Hmm. it's something we always wanted to do but we were too afraid to do it because everyone told us that you can't do that but when one person said that we could and we need to do that it changed everything for us last year. Awesome. Yeah. For me, it was very much like the year of 2017 was stepping into a vision that was a lot bigger than, than I could ever fill. And it it was a a year that I started off on a journey of daily lessons learned, meaning failing every single day or trying something so big that things could go wrong every single day. And that was, that was huge. And Amanda obviously gave you the result of the transition that we made into building a brotherhood rather than just one specific product or service, but actually tailoring a lifestyle that men could follow and want to be like, that was very interesting change. And that's where everything blew up for us. So it was by far our best year, but then even personally, the, the push and struggle of having to do something that you're like, I don't know if I'm good enough to pull that off. Like mm. who else is doing this? I don't know. Like it's, just, it's very interesting. And that's why you know, having a, having a brand like that, it's very organically built as well because it's super new as well. And in this day and age, like we're in our office, right. And everyone else in our office, if you're like, what do they do? They'd be like, um, I don't know what they do exactly. Like they sell things on the internet. Like, is it local? Do people stop by? Like, do you have, do you sell things out of the office? I'm like, no, like we just sit here and like grind away and do our thing and make money and like help people. That's it. (laughs) Yeah, you it. probably experienced this before you like go to the bank to like open up a merchant account. And they're like, what exactly do you sell? Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, well, services. We're like, think of us like Tony Robbins, basically that. Yeah. <laughs> like live events and coaching. They're like, you make money like that? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, and then obviously, like being in the bank, they see like the income statements and they're like, they're very confused. And yeah. I think they're Same. very like, how old are you? <laughs> Yeah. And so by the way, I had this guy, I don't know who he was popped up on my screen and I usually don't engage and or scroll through the Facebook uh, feed. But this guy was like, why the fuck would you, this was exactly, he's like, why the fuck would you hire a 25 year old life coach? You, oh my God. I saw that post. You saw that post. Oh, yeah. so you, you could see my comment. I don't know why I was just, I was like in the morning and I was like, I'm like, where, what, what are you talking about? And I, and I actually wrote this I, I like gave up like all this defensive stuff 
I'm not, you know, I'm 36 years old, but like still, I just, I feel like that's so ignorant. Cause I was like, I know 60 year olds who are imbeciles in compared to some 20 year olds that I've met. So like, it has nothing. I said, why would you, why would you hire, uh, why would you send a 16 year old to the Olympics for gymnastics? Like they're the best freaking performer in the entire world at that age. And a 25 year old can't beat them. You're kind of like, dude, it, in sports, you would listen to them because they mastered a subject and got really good at it and at a peak time of their life. Peaking in athletics is a lot younger. So it's like, to me, it's so stupid when it's like, I could send a 13-year-old to the Olympics and win gold for gymnastics. Would you learn gymnastics from her? Yeah. Yeah, you would. So could you learn a thing or two from a freaking 16-year-old, a 25-year-old? I mean, it's, it's hilarious, man. I get that we don't know everything. And, and at 20, you don't know what it's like to get divorced. Maybe. Maybe some do. Some do. <laughs> yeah, some do. There's quite a few, actually. It's probably a couple hundred <laughs> yeah, thousand now that I think about it. Um, but the deal is, is like, they, that doesn't mean someone's not good at a subject. And that's why I think there's a big difference between a, uh, like having a mentor and a coach. A coach is really good at like a subject or a way of life or they have an expertise and they stick to their expertise generally. A mentor, like my mentors are generally older. I do have some younger mentors, but generally older and they teach me how to live my life and look at it differently with principles of how I can solve subjects and problems in all these areas and have a life that I want to model. Yeah. And, but that's not, like a coach, I would take a 16 year old gold medalist as a coach in gymnastics over a freaking 60 year old that can't do a cartwheel. Yeah. I mean, they were talking about like skills versus life, this and that. And I'm like, look, at the end of the day, I think people are either looking for, I said, it came to me later, like you're either looking for a crutch, meaning like someone to tell you what to do and how to do it. But that doesn't really help because that's just, you're always reliant on that crutch or you're looking for a coach. Coach can teach you how to find that thing inside of you that then you get to shine that out. And those, are, I think, are the best coaches. So anyway, I know we're, uh, we're out of time and I could do this all day because I'm just having so much fun with you guys. Uh, so first of all, thank you for taking the time out and, and being here with our audience. Um, and as always, I just love for people to know where to find you and connect with you guys. So the first thing is if you want to meet with us in person and a bunch of other incredible businessmen, we have our live event, Billion Dollar Body Live, June 8th through 10th in San Diego. So that's at BillionDollarBodyLive.com. And then if you want to follow me, if you're a girl, at Amanda Barely on Instagram and then Nicholas Barely on Instagram. Awesome. Guys, absolute pleasure spending time with you. Thank you so much. I wish you guys the best of luck. Go check them out. Amazing couple, amazing business, and we'll see you guys all on the next podcast. Have an amazing day, guys.